Welcome to Naturally Plus Talk TV. We are joined today by one of the most authoritative voices in the world on the subject of carotenoid research, Professor Frederick Kotchik, the immediate past president of the International Carotenoid Society. Now, in addition to his many other accomplishments, Dr. Kotchik holds two patents for the isolation and purification of lutein from marigold flowers and greens. And as the viewers of this program know, superlutein derives its lutein from marigolds. Professor Kotchik received his doctorate in organic chemistry from the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, that's in England, and he completed postdoctoral research at the University of Maryland. Since then, Dr. Kotchik's research has resulted in identification of more than 50 carotenoids in fruits and vegetables. 34 carotenoids and nine metabolites in human plasma and breast milk. And additionally, he's established the existence of several mechanisms by which carotenoids may prevent chronic and age-related conditions. Following work at the Human Nutrition Research Center at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Dr. Kotchik accepted an appointment to the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at the University of Maryland as senior research scientist, where he has collaborated to establish the bioavailability and metabolism of carotenoids such as lutein, zeaxanthin, did I get that right, Fred? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Been practicing that all morning, and lycopene in the prevention of macular degeneration. Collaborating with Professor Nishino and his team at Kyoto University School of Medicine, Dr. Kachik demonstrated the chemopreventive properties of dietary carotenoids such as lycopene and lutein. Dr. Kachik has published 63 peer-reviewed articles, 18 book chapters, and he has been awarded 12 patents. Since 1990, Dr. Kachik has presented more than 100 carotenoid lectures at national and international conferences. Dr. Kachik, welcome to Naturally Plus Talk TV. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much. You know, I want to begin with what uh, we call the what, where, and why in journalism of precisely how it is you came to be interested in carotenoid research. Well, I began my career in uh, carotenoid research in 1983. Uh, where uh, at that time I accepted a position at the Department of Agriculture Human Nutrition Research Center, mm -hmm. as you pointed out. And at that time, uh, Human Nutrition Research Center had a, a grant from the National Cancer Institute to conduct studies with fruits and vegetables to determine the vitamin A uh, amounts in the foods that we consume in the United States. Shortly after my I began my research, I realized that the carotenoids in our fruits and vegetables are not limited to beta carotene and alpha carotene and vitamin A carotenoids. Which is and what we all hear about every right. day. Right, and, and in fact, there is a wide ranging of carotenoids that are present in our diet. And therefore, I began a systematic uh, approach in identifying and characterizing these carotenoids. And uh, by the way, the word carot carotenoids comes from carrots, which are source of alpha and beta carotene. So that is uh -huh. the uh, so-called nomenclature for the, the carotenoid that we have been using. Now, as I understand, in the beginning, your research wasn't taken very seriously by the scientific community. That is correct, because when I began my research, uh, if you went to a national or international conference and you began talking about other carotenoids, people were, were wondering why is it that we are interested in non-vitamin A active carotenoids, because uh, like I said, many people were conducting research with uh, beta carotene and vitamin A active carotenoids. And, a large number of these carotenoids that were in our daily diet and were also present in our blood and had very important biological properties have been over, had been overlooked. Mm -hmm. I think we have a slide about what you're talking about, uh, Doctor, which is our, our first slide here on carotenoids in nature. Now, we've been looking at a very pic pretty picture of nature. 
Can you tell us a little bit about this, please? Yes, carotenoids actually in nature serve a very important property, and that, that, that is the fact that they participate in photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. Photosynthesis is a process where plant uses the sunlight to convert the, the energy from the sunlight into chemical energy that is used for the growth of the plant. Carotenoid functions in green plants is to protect the chlorophylls from overexposure to harmful sunlight. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is fair to say that if we did not have carotenoids in green plants, we wouldn't have a green planet. So this is very interesting and they actually, in somehow, they function very similarly in humans because the oxida oxidation of chlorophylls is what they do in the plant, and in our body, they actually act as antioxidant to protect us ag against various diseases. And of course, uh, in, there are about 700 carotenoids in nature, whereas in our food supply, perhaps these are as many as 50 carotenoids that I have divided into various categories. Now, it's the carotenoids that give the marigolds their color, isn't it? Yes, carotenoids are found, as we can see in some of the uh, following slides, carotenoids are found in um, marigolds, mm -hmm. as you pointed out. They are actually accumulating the skin of the animals. Flamingos have a carotenoid called astaxanthin, and particularly in the, in the uh, marine animals and birds, also they are present, and the beautiful color of yellow to orange to red of mm -hmm. these animals is due to carotenoids. Dr. Kachik, a, a good part of your research has been in the distribution of carotenoids in foods. Talk to us about that. Yes, as I mentioned, there are approximately 50 to 60 carotenoids in the diet that we typically consume in the United States. And I have divided the foods into three major categories based on their carotenoid content. These are the green fruits and vegetables, yellow orange fruits and vegetables, and the red fruits and vegetables. For example, in the green vegetables um, and fruits, of course, uh, such as beans, and uh, lima beans, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cabbages, and these are basically sources of lutein, zeaxanthin, alpha and beta carotene, and beta cryptoxanthin, uh, alpha and beta cryptoxanthin. Now, the chlorophylls, of course, are not absorbed into our body, but the carotenoids are very well absorbed and they exert their uh, functions in protecting us against diseases. The yellow to orange fruits and vegetables contain a variety of carotenoids, and these are, again, uh, alpha beta cryptoxanthin, lutein zeaxanthin, lycopene, and so on and so forth. The last category, which are the red fruits and vegetables, are primarily found in tomato and tomato-based food products, and these are sources of lycopene and a number of other carotenoids, such as zeta carotene, beta carotene, phytofluin, and phytoin. There are only four carotenoids that uh, exert vitamin A activity in our food supply. These are um, beta carotene, alpha carotene, gamma carotene, and beta cryptoxanthin. However, other carotenoids such as lutein, zeaxanthin, and alpha cryptoxanthin, these are the carotenoids that are found in the uh, formula by Naturally Plus, are, uh, have no vitamin A activity, but they have important biological properties. It's also important to note that some of these carotenoids also exist in the esterified form. These are esters with fatty acids. And the esters of carotenoids are not directly absorbed, but in the presence of the pancreatic secretions, the esters are cleaved off, and the original free forms of the lutein and zeaxanthin are absorbed by the body. However, it is not really very clear if the carotenoid esters are as bioavailable uh, to humans as the free form of the lutein and zeaxanthin, which is, again, the carotenoids found in the Naturally Plus formula. You um, have talked about bioavailability of these, and I know from our previous discussion, this is extremely important. Can you talk a little about that, please? Yes, it is important to point out that, for example, if you eat a a uh, salad uh, that contains, for example, 10 milligram of lutein uh, in that food, not all of it actually ends up in the human blood because uh, it's going to have to go through uh, various uh, stages before it actually ends up into the human bloodstream. So the bioavailability from food is definitely not as good as the bioavailability from uh, dietary supplements. So uh, when we take dietary supplements of lutein, zeaxanthin, and other carotenoids, we get a much uh, greater 
greater amount of these carotenoids into, into our bloodstream, which in turn is actually uh, stored in various organs and tissues, is found in the human skin, is found in the human um, breast milk, is found in every organ and tissue that I have looked at, and the major functions of them is to prevent the uh, organs and tissues from oxidative damage. Doctor, in addition to bioavailability, there's a, a, a specific distinction about bioactivity. Can you talk to us about that, please? Yes, uh, working with a number of collaborators over the years, we have established several biological properties for carotenoids. Of course, uh, among the most important are, is the uh, oxidative uh, damage that can happen to, which is basically the source of any disease these days. And so ant antioxidant properties of carotenoids is very important and this is one of the major uh, mechanisms by which they protect uh, us against various chronic diseases. They exhibit anti-inflammatory properties, which is actually tied very closely to uh, antioxidant properties. So mm -hmm. typically a compound that shows antioxidant property also has anti-inflammatory properties. And of, of course, carotenoids also stimulate the phase two enzymes. These are enzymes that are involved in metabolic detoxication. And of course, they enhance immune response to oxidative stress. And of course, the very recent uh, studies that have been conducted uh, demonstrate that carotenoids are very, uh, play a very important role in protecting against uh, mac age-related macular degeneration, which is an eye disease. So many of the things that we eat are not necessarily supportive of the immune system. How do carotenoids participate? Well, one of the ways that carotenoids protect us against the immune system is actually has been done with the diabetic patients because these have a very high glucose level and a high glucose level actually has been very much associated with oxidative stress. Carotenoids actually serve as antioxidants, so therefore uh, treatment with carotenoids such as lutein and other carotenoids uh, in combination with insulin uh, or alone has been shown to actually protect the uh, cell-mediated uh, the, the cells and boost the cell-mediated immunity. Lutein, uh, zeaxanthin have also been shown to accumulate in the eye, as you have mentioned. Lutein and zeaxanthin are the only two carotenoids that are uh, accumulating in the center of the retina, which is a region called the macula. This region is the most exposed region of the human eye to the harmful sunlight. And as we age, the photosensing cells in that region actually are um, deterior deteriorated, and this results in the progression of a disease called that age-related macular degeneration, which is the leading cause of the blindness in the United States. Mm. And uh, the way the lutein and zeaxanthin function in the eye is uh, perhaps two mechanisms have been proposed. One would be to act as antioxidant, and the, uh, the other one is the uh, acting as optical filters to filter out the harmful UV light. As you can see in this slide, uh, a healthy eye sees very well on the left side, and the eye with macular degeneration loses the central vision in the eye. And uh, this is, of course, eventually leads to complete blindness. There are two types of macular degeneration. This slide actually shows a healthy eye. This is what we call a fundus photograph of the human eye, which a typical ophthalmologist can actually take these kind of photos. And that spot uh, that is dark orange, as you can see, is where lutein and zeaxanthin accumulate. Now, there are two types of macular degeneration. One type is called the wet macular degeneration. The other one is called the dry type. The series of photos that are shown on the top shows the wet type of macular degeneration, which is the gradual um, release of uh, blood and fluid into the eye. And this is a very rare form of macular degeneration. Per perhaps about 10% of people with macular degeneration have the wet type. And it progresses very rapidly as opposed to the dry type of macular degeneration, which is the slide, series of slides shown on the bottom. And dry type can progress within five to six years. And it, the hallmark of the dry form is basically formation of little uh, yellowish uh, spots that are called drusens. So these people that have drusens ha are at high risk for developing of the, the dry type of macular degeneration. Carotenoids also accumulate in the human cellular body, which is a tissue that is responsible for, uh, uh, for focus on objects. And when this tissue is not working properly, 
it's actually results in a disease called perspiopia, with, which is inability to focus on objects. And carotenoids in this tissue also protect us against uh, a disease called glaucoma, uh, which is building of the pressure in the eye. And also in that tissue, they serve as antioxidant, a uh, very different mechanism than uh, working as optical filter because that tissue is not directly exposed to any light. You know, you, very early in your research, you discovered the importance of lutein and zeaxanthin. And uh, you gave a paper, and I remember you told me that uh, one of your colleagues said that this was a tempest in a teapot, that you were making a lot of what at that time was thought to be not so much. But tell us how the research has demonstrated. What has it shown? Well, as I mentioned earlier on, when I published a paper that described the presence of a wide range of carotenoids in green fruits and vegetables, obviously this paper had to be subjected to peer review by the journal. And the reviewer was really uh, surprised as why I was interested in these other carotenoids as, as mm. opposed to beta carotene. And he mentioned to, that in his uh, critique of our paper that this was a tempest in a teapot and I wasn't sure what that <laughs> meant. <laughs> and when I asked around, they told me that it means that uh, you're trying to steer the scientific community. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that I did that because it kind of opened up the eye of researchers to other carotenoids besides beta carotene and uh, hopefully uh, I was able to change the attitudes of the scientists towards this and particularly interested in, uh, in lutein and zeaxanthin because high levels of these carotenoids were, were and, and lycopene and high levels of these carotenoids were found in the human blood and it, we had also discovered their important biological properties. Um, talk to us about your patent in this area doctor. Well, the best source of lutein and zeaxanthin in nature is from marigold flowers because they have a relatively high concentration of these carotenoids. For more than 50 years, marigold petals had, had been imported into the United States uh, by a company called Chemin uh, Industries, and the extracts of these flowers are put into the uh, chicken feed and poultry feed in order to enhance the color of the uh, skin of the chickens and of course the egg yolk. And uh, FDA had approved actually the use of these uh, uh, extracts in, for the animal feed but not for the human use of course. And what I did was uh, I was able to purify lutein in a very high purity from extracts of marigold flour. And in marigold flour uh, the lutein exists as a sterified form. This of course shows chemical structure of the carotenoids in lutein and uh, was able to basically purify this in a very high form that could be used for human consumption as a dietary supplement. And of course, I obtained approval from the FDA to conduct human studies with lutein and zeaxanthin. Your first human studies were on yourself, weren't they? Yes, they were. <laughs> and uh, in fact, uh, I became interested in this uh, lutein and zeaxanthin. So I got my boss and another colleague to take lutein as well as myself, of course, for uh, a period of uh, three weeks. And as you can see, the design of the study, and we basically took blood samples from ourselves to see how lutein actually ends up in the blood at, at the dose of 10 milligram per day for about three weeks. As you can see that um, this curve actually shows the accumulation of lutein in the human blood uh, by taking about 10 milligrams of lutein uh, during the period that we conducted the study. And following that, we actually conducted another study with zeaxanthin. Uh, this particular zeaxanthin was isolated from a Chinese fruit, but nonetheless, uh, it showed us very interesting uh, bioavailability pattern in the sense that when we took 10 milligram of zeaxanthin for three weeks, it also allowed us to increase the blood level of this carotenoid. And this was important because this, these were the very first studies that were ever conducted with lutein and zeaxanthin to demonstrate their absorption and their bioavailability in humans as a dietary supplement. This company is the same company that Naturally Plus gets its lutein from as well. Yes, isn't it? Uh, Chemin, uh, Chemin Health uh, is producing lutein and their brand name is Flora Glow. And this is what Naturally Plus uh, supplement, dietary supplement, contains Flora Glow, which is, of course, uh, coming from lutein. And it has a very high purity and is from natural source. 
Dr. Kachik, tell us about the pilot study that you did in collaboration with NEI. Yes, uh, I was very interested to encourage the NEI to conduct a much larger clinical trial with lutein and zeaxanthin. And at that time, they had to do a pilot study with uh, supplementation with lutein and zeaxanthin in order to design a much larger clinical trial. So the objective of the pilot study was basically to see what would be the appropriate dose of lutein that they could give to human subjects in a much larger uh, clinical trial. In addition, it was important to find out if there was any interactions between dietary uh, uh, supplemental intake of lutein and zeaxanthin and other vitamins such as vitamin A and E. And therefore, this study would help us to understand a um, appropriate dose for consumption uh, by in a larger clinical trial. Now, in this study, we took 45 subjects, we divided them into three categories. These were subjects with no AMD, which served as controls, subjects at middle stage of AMD, and of course subjects at the end stage of AMD. We gave these subjects uh, in each group um, various doses of lutein and zeaxanthin. As you can see in this slide, uh, two and a half milligram, five milligram, and 10 milligram daily dose of lutein was given, and zeaxanthin was, were, were given to these subjects on a, for the period of six months. The design of the study was such that week one was the baseline and during the supplementation at various point, blood samples were taken from these uh, individuals and we of course looked at the buildup of lutein and zeaxanthin in their blood. What was very interesting, we found that at the high dose of 10 milligram per day, we had the best bioavailability for lutein and zeaxanthin and this curve actually shows that. In summary, uh, from this study, what we found out that the mean serum concentration of lutein can significantly increase at the 10 milligram dose. There was no interaction or side effects with other supplement, other vitamins and nutrients, and therefore this was a dose that actually was used in a much larger clinical trial. Doctor, talk to us about the larger clinical trial conducted by NEI. Yes, NEI uh, initially conducted a study with beta carotene to see the, uh, and of course um, other vitamins and uh, DHA, to see the effect of supplementation in patients with macular degeneration, or at least in the early stage of macular degeneration, uh, over a period of uh, five to six years. And at the end of this study, they concluded that there was a 25% reduction in the incidence of macular degeneration. This study is known as ARADS-1, and more recently, in the past six years, National Eye Institute decided that they want to examine the uh, ARADS-1 formula with ARADS-2, in which they substituted um, beta-carotene for lutein and zeaxanthin. The ARADS-2 study was very promising because it showed a 35% reduction in the risk of age-related macular degeneration. And as a result, the National Eye Institute has published several papers and there, uh, that indicates clearly that um, supplementation with ARADS-1 formula would be beneficial if beta-carotene is replaced with lutein and zeaxanthin. With all of these studies taking place, it's inevitable that people are going to want to know about safety as regards lutein supplementation. Well, the natural sources of carotenoids obviously are the uh, lutein that comes from fluoroglow, and uh, this uh, lutein has been obviously shown in many studies that to be safe. Uh, this was the lutein that was used in the clinical trial by the National Eye Institute, and also the study that we conducted on ourselves. And there has been other studies to show the safety of this lutein. In fact, there is a study that uh, looked at the very high doses of lutein intake uh, in animals as, and of course these are what we call subchronic toxicity studies, and there were no toxicity or side effect observed in these studies. Usually these studies uh, use very high doses uh, to see if there, there can be any side effects. So lutein and zeaxanthin, obviously these are, these are the two carotenoids that are found in the Naturally Plus uh, formula and they're quite safe because they have been used uh, for many years by people as dietary supplement, and this is what Naturally Plus uses. 
Doctor, talk to us about the natural sources of carotenoids. The natural sources of carotenoids are obviously lutein uh, and zeaxanthin or originated from the marigold, which is produced by Chemin Industry, and the brand name is Floraglow. This is the product that is actually used in naturally processed formula and is quite safe because it has been used in uh, several clinical trials, as I mentioned earlier. And the sources of alpha and beta carotene are palm oil, and this palm oil, of course, is a naturally occurring uh, oil that is actually used as cooking oil. And um, lycopene is actually coming from tomato, and this is, a, again, a natural source for lycopene, which is the red pigment in tomatoes, by the way. These are all uh, are shown, the various doses of these carotenoids are shown in this slide that clearly indicate that the dietary supplement produced by Naturally Plus is very safe and all ingredients are from natural sources. Dr. Kachik, you were one of the first persons to talk about the importance of supplementing with multiple carotenoids. And as a result of your research, you have endorsed Superlutein and Naturally Plus. Talk to us about that, please. Yes, in early 1990s, when I realized that the human blood contains a wide range of carotenoids, I actually wrote a paper that suggested the use of a combination of carotenoids for, as a dietary supplement. And at that time, unfortunately, there were no companies interested in producing a mixture of carotenoids as a dietary supplement. Um, the reason that I was very uh, enthusiastic about this such a combination was very obvious because uh, there are some 34 carotenoids found in fruits and vegetables uh, that accumulate actually in the human blood, organs, and tissues. These carotenoids are found in the human skin, protects us against overexposure to the sunlight. It only makes sense that if uh, we are going to basically copy what is in fruits and vegetables and come up with a dietary supplement to mix these carotenoids at a uh, reasonable amount and provide a dietary supplement that would provide us with all these important nutrients. The important fact about this is that the Naturally Plus is using all of the uh, carotenoids uh, that are in this formula are of natural sources. There are no side effect or toxicity associated with these things. In addition, combination of lutein and DHA is particularly very important. We know the function of DHA, uh, which is found, by the way, in the brain, in the heart, and all uh, organs and tissues is very important for the growth and uh, maintenance of the health. As a result, I'm very pleased that eventually, uh, after so many years, I'm able mm. to see a dietary supplement out there that contains all the important carotenoids that is found in Naturally Plus formula. And I know you have been supplementing yourself for how many years with? Uh, perhaps more than 10 years. That's wonderful. And the evidence shows in you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Jack. And on behalf of Naturally Plus, congratulations on your research and the Thank outcomes. you very much. I'm very glad to be here and have, uh, have this opportunity to tell the public about the importance of carotenoid uh, in prevention of disease. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. NPUSA greatly appreciates the contributions of Dr. Kachik to the science of carotenoid research and to supporting the NPUSA mission of universal wellness. When used on a regular basis, the antioxidant properties of lutein and other carotenoids contained in superlutein may contribute to wellness in the specific areas of health supported by the research of Dr. Kachik and other scientists. Although Dr. Kachik's research and clinical trials suggest that regular use of superlutein may have delayed the onset of macular degeneration in some of the persons studied, additional clinical trials are necessary to confirm whether regular use of superlutein actually delays or prevents any disease. Superlutein is a nutritional supplement intended to support the healthy structure and function of the body, not to prevent, cure, or treat any disease. The United States Food and Drug Administration has not reviewed or evaluated any of these claims. For additional information, contact a member of NPUSA.